Good evening and welcome to the Cover One Buffalo Podcast. You are joining your host, Greg Thompson, along with my partner in crime, Aaron Quinn. Aaron, we are back on a winning streak. How are you feeling? As confident as ever. You know me. When we start winning, I'm just zooming, baby. I'm ready to do this. I've, I've been excited about this show all day, man. It's good to see you. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, It's been nice to get back into the swing of things and to feel a little bit more normal. We'll, we'll get into our Uncle Jumbo's player spotlight later on. Got our friends up here at Uncle Jumbo's, our, uh, our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Make sure to download the Under, Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code COVER1. Get yourself $10 free. Uh, I've been doing pretty well. I've, I've been doing all right. I've not, my... I've not been doing well. <laughs> I keep adding and uh, giving them a lot of money. That's the, that's their goal. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job with that. But yeah, I'm, I'm still rolling with my original uh, funds in there and, and doing pretty well. But uh, yeah, hoping for another another big week this week. But it's a, it's an interesting week, and, and we'll talk about it with our, our guests coming up here. The Bills are facing the Houston Texans in Buffalo. Uh, they are a heavy favorite this week, um, but it's an interesting week to go in, and, and a lot of traditional trap game, you know, uh, risks as you go in here. Obviously, Kansas City Chiefs coming up next week with a huge, huge game traveling out to Kansas City. It's going to be interesting to see if Sean McDermott and the guys can keep everybody focused. But to to talk about it a little bit more, we're going to bring up our friend Rivers McCown. You know him from Football Outsiders and NBC Sports Edge. Rivers, how we doing? Well, we're we're going to do another preview show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were Season talking... It hasn't ended yet. <laughs> we were talking off air that... You know, the Bills, obviously, in totality, going through a 17-year playoff drought was demoralizing and frustrating. We were on every graphic when it came up of the longest playoff drought in pro sports history, all the different pieces of that. But we're always on the other graphic, the in the hunt. Yes. Late in the year, there's still a little glimmer of hope. Seven and seven, we're six and eight. We're always right there in the thick of it, and then kind of you know crumble and fall apart. We were famous for getting off to the hot start and then crumbling and falling apart. We didn't have a lot of genuinely bottom out, you know, not not a lot of you know hope there in, in Houston. In not that long in the past, the heck the Bills faced the Texans not that long ago in the playoffs. You yeah. know, we'll give you. A little bit of a space to explore here. What's the mentality here, not only from an analyst standpoint, but from a fan standpoint? How is it to deal with in the in the face of so many questions, so much maybe lack of immediate strategy or direction? How are, are you and other fans kind of getting your head around it? Well, it's not it's not just about immediate strategy, like like bottoming out. Like that doesn't really matter to fans. Fans don't feel like they can trust anybody in this organization anymore. They don't feel like they can trust Cal McNair to make the right decisions. Uh, Jack Easterby, of course, has his ear at that very public SI thing. So we have that. We have an obvious schism there between Deshaun Watson wanting to get traded. And then, you know, that kind of separated the fan base a little bit. <laughs> After that, we kind of go to this whole uh, massage therapist situation, which is just awful. Nobody wants to talk about it. And that further kind of split the fan base and, you know, we're having a Thursday night game, our only primetime game of the year, basically at all. And can't fill the stadium. Uh, Panthers fans come out in droves at the end, uh, get embarrassed on, on national television. Nobody even wants to talk about the Houston Texans. And, and it's just a very weird place to be in because it's not only about organizationally, there's no goal, but organizationally, Nobody can really put forward a reason to have optimism or hope. And that's just, it's just very bleak right now. It's bleak to talk about. Um, people don't really engage with the content I put up that is Texans related. They don't want to hear about Deshaun or they want to move on to talk about the next draft. Like it's just, it's, it's a brutal time to talk about the Texans. So anyway, how's your preview show going? <laughs> well, that, besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Yeah. <laughs> It's uh so it's kind of crazy though because just a couple years ago we met in the playoffs right and everybody was in Buffalo that was a big defining moment of this franchise moving forward I think a lot of people saw that as Josh Allen's catalyst uh you, you saw the memes and the pictures of him sitting on the sideline just uh, ready to go back and that he built that next MVP caliber season off of it and I don't know that any analysts thought that the fall from grace would be so quick uh, in such a 
quick descent for the Texans because for so many years, you guys were kind of always right in the thick of playoff hunts. You had a really stable franchise, it seemed, um, a, a number of years, a pick of mine to be competing for the AFC Championship here over the last number of years. And just uh, a quick fall. I know, for instance, my brother is a big fan of the Chicago Bears, and they've been searching for a franchise quarterback and love Deshaun Watson. And to have that uh, franchise quarterback and then your organization, regardless of his outside issues that are have, have come up now, for him not to want to be there at all, um, this particular fall from grace in covering this team – you know, how has that been to just see how quick it's just decelerated there from such a good team to now really down there with the, you know, Jets and, and things? When I wrote about Bill O'Brien being fired, I wrote about it as this is an opportunity. They, they still had great players on the team at that point. Right. There's still kind of a chance to coalesce around them. And what they did was lose Deshaun Watson's trust, get rid of J.J. Watt, get rid of Will Fuller, and replace them with, I'm not going to be mean to them, but, you know, 25th to 40th best players in everybody's roster. And the results have been what they've been, man. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it, nobody's having fun except for kind of the whole. Tyra dy- looked like he was having a little bit of fun for a minute. There, there's a whole, there's this like dynamic with it all where, where there's like Houston versus everyone. And, and like, you know, just like this big underdog role where, we, we all like talk about, oh, well, this is, you know, we're going to show them. And it doesn't really work out that well, I'm yeah. going to be honest with you guys. But that's just kind of how a lot of the fan base is talking right now. Yeah. Well, it- it's interesting. There's been a handful. People have asked about you know just strategically. And again, long term, there's plenty of questions. Short term, I, I thought it was mildly interesting to go out and i don't know i remember the number maybe 36 free agents added yeah. at one point yeah. and so many of them you know names that fans know people on one-year deals and like hey if we get enough people to kind of compete for their next contract we'll get a higher level of competition and you know obviously the the week one you know dominant win in many cases and and you know i know i live in cleveland i'm I'm doing the show from here right now plenty of people were concerned about if uh tyrod hadn't got hurt would the texans have have maybe won that game it's almost weird to be in a space where you have a bunch of guys not necessarily fighting long term to be a part of the texans but knowing that they're playing their hardest for their next contract and then are you are you rooting for that success short term is that actually counterproductive to the long-term goals and it's just it's a it's a really interesting i don't want to say science experiment but it's a really interesting build to see that's a that, that's a good word for it though that's a good word for it though the one way i can try to explain this to people who see the roster that's been accumulated and don't understand that it's not tanking is that nick casario set out to build the team based on personality like he really he said he talked about the such sloan he goes all in on kind of those intangible traits that people aren't talking about. And it is to some extent kind of a science experiment right now. Yeah. Um, I think you can say mixed results. Like the first game wasn't bad at all by any means. It was a little lucky. But uh, yeah, it, it's it, it's hard to talk about that and balance the long term. And basically where I'm at as, a, as like a fan is just like I'm rooting for these guys every week, the players. But the organization, I have no trust that they're going to do anything right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I when I watch this team, and we'll jump into you know sides of the ball here now, when I watch this team, though, I do see a team that uh, is kind of pesky. And try, I think a lot of fans uh, with the Bills, they see that spread, and they see what the Bills just come off of, two pretty big wins here back-to-back, and think, oh, this is just guaranteed to be a blow. And I'm not saying that it doesn't have the makings to potentially be a blow up, but this team isn't just going to roll over. They're playing for David Cully right now. They're playing for their contracts. Like Craig said, like this is a team that's coming out and going to give you everything they have. I don't think the players, I I don't believe in tanking in the NFL, like an organization may tank and, uh, but the coaches aren't tanking players are not tanking. That's just not how NFL guys are wired. So let's jump right in here uh, to the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, we here in Buffalo thought this was going to be a, you know, Tyrod Taylor coming back uh, to Buffalo and getting a, a nice warm greeting here. I, I know not everyone's a big fan. I was a big fan of Tyrod. So I was looking forward to seeing him have some success with the Texans this year, but it's not It's Davis mills. And I don't know. I've watched, I watched that last game. I still don't know who this guy is. Can you fill me in on the quarterback here for the Texans heading into Buffalo this weekend? 
I think the best way to describe Davis Mills is that he had 13 college starts. And when he was asked about that and how it factored into his decision-making process, he said that he got a lot of virtual reality reps at Stanford and that that worked out for him. So, I mean, he, he, his accuracy is, is, I would say some of the worst I've ever seen. He does kind of function the offense pretty well. He had some moments in his first like half game in Cleveland that weren't great or that he was on the rough pit. He was on the wrong page. He does focus on first read right, right now. It, it's very Brandon Cook's heavy offense in general. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to say that he's, you know, a lot to be a bad player, but I do think he's going to be mistake prone. And I do think that the bill's heavy zone looks are kind of something that I'm worried about him. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th- I do think that's the path for the bills here is to, again, the, uh, the show that goes on before is called this guy's coverage because of the, this guy's looks that the bills get. I enjoy going up against young quarterbacks uh, yeah. because of some of that ability. If, if you can just grab a half second, on some of these guys and get them off that first read, uh, but a place that the bills not so much this year yet, uh, but have struggled in, in the past is the run game. Texans have the names, right? Like you, you see the names here, Ingram, uh, David Johnson, Philip Lindsay. I'm a big <laughs> Philip Lindsay fan and them not getting him the rock and getting him going is blowing my mind. Uh, but really nobody in this backfield has been able to get going. Is this more of the players are their names maybe generate a little more weight than their abilities do at this point in their career? Or is it more this offensive line sort of cobbled together and not really able to help develop that run game a little bit? So maybe we can jump into both those units real real quick. Sure. So Tim Kelly has done a pretty fair job, I would say, at creating a passing game. Like it's not, it's, you know, kind of smoke and mirrors to some extent, but he has a good grasp of what's happening there, how motion works to get that guys open, that sort of thing. Uh, running game has been a disaster from the start for him. Uh, even when he took over for Bill O'Brien after week four last year, he was kind of like just going through it. And I mean, they try to run zone, kind of zone a zone team first. And, you know, their offensive line has not been together pretty much at all until week one happened. You got Marcus Cannon, who had been hurt all training camp. You got Justin Britt, who has been working with the guys, but out of football in 2020 um, and most of 2019, too. And then you've got uh, Titus Howard moving to a new position, uh, right tackle. A guy I like, though, in the draft a couple years ago there. Yep. And uh, Larry Tunsil uh, coming off, recovering from COVID. Uh, I think kind of a sneaky, underrated thing here. Uh, what he did his presser two weeks ago, he did not sound especially well. Like he was coughing a lot still. It was kind of obvious to me as like an observer, like, I don't know if this guy's like really, really giving his all right now. Like he's just trying to fight through this, you know, disease. And uh, right. I think that's kind of a big part of why they've struggled so far. The, yeah, the Bills we saw had, similar struggles with Dan Dawkins early yeah. in the And he was time. almost a month, three weeks or so removed and, and back at practice. And still, he talked about how, how difficult that struggle was to get back into – playing at the highest caliber uh, athlete you can. So I, I don't blame them there. This wide receiver room, you hit it earlier. This is Brandon Cook's offense. The ball's going to Brandon Cook's. Uh, yes. I'm assuming Tredavious White is going to be on Cook's all day like he was on Terry McLaurin last week. Uh, but there's some other guys here, and I, I liked what we saw at Anthony Miller. I was super high on Anthony Miller coming out of the draft. Didn't work out in Chicago. Just getting started here with the Texans. Had a decent week last week. It wasn't all Brandon Cooks last week, so I, I do like Anthony Miller. I've been a big Chris Conley guy for a long time. I don't know if it's just I like these the guys with this big size and some of that speed, and I just feel like he hasn't gotten a shot, but not yet producing for you guys. And obviously everybody here uh, in Buffalo knows Danny Amendola, but I think pretty much a journeyman slot guy at this point in his career. Uh, are they, is this going to be the one read Brandon cook show here this weekend? And they're going to force the ball to him against Trey white. Or are they going to try to get these other guys going here this weekend? <laughs> Definitely does feel like that it's going to be the, the one man show. Um, uh, Evan Dola did not practice again today as the thigh injury has been out for, I think nine or 10 days now. Uh, I, I would consider it kind of unlikely that he comes back for this game. I think we'll see more Anthony Miller and Chris Conley will be the outside guy. Um, losing Nico Collins really hurt. Um, mm-hmm. Nico was the one guy who over the preseason kind of flashed a little bit. Kind Love of Michigan some, guys. Kind of showed you some uh, big boy traits in the red zone and everything. Uh, Conley hasn't really shown that to the same extent. 
Um, uh, yeah, I think pretty much Anthony Miller in, over the middle field, Jordan Aikens maybe over the middle of the field. That'll be probably their combined number two receiver plan. And as you said, it's you know it's it's guys who you liked five years ago in the draft. <laughs> right. I know it's uh, well, and so speaking of guys we like in the draft, I, I'm, uh, the tight end room again. This is a room that they're not heavily targeting the tight end room. If, if I'm a Texans fan, I'm clamoring for Brevin Jordan to just get on the field and get a shot because that's a guy I think all of us draft geeks sort of fell for the traits the RAS score and said man this guy's a project but the athleticism just flies off the charts and if you're not getting anything out of that position it's hard not to see why you wouldn't at least get some type of playmaker in there can you talk about this tight end room and what Texans fans can expect from the development of Brevin Jordan how long that's going to take and I'm sure there's calls in the Texans Twitter to to get him going uh, I mean, to some extent, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are always those optimistic fans kind of out there. We've got them. We've got them. <laughs> they asked David Cully about Brevin Jordan today and kind of gave a non-answer about development and whatnot. So, again, expecting another DNP. It, it, it really hurts yeah. me inside. But uh, <laughs> we've got uh, Farrell Brown, I think, is probably the most underrated player on the team. Yeah. Uh, came out of nowhere last year, started carrying a bunch of guys on his back, on his catches, a good run blocker. Uh, decent enough in pass protection, but not a guy you want to build it around. But still, I think probably on the on the verge of being like a top 25 tight end in the league, which is pretty good for an undrafted free agent who absolutely kind of hung around in the in Cleveland for a while. And then Akins, who I have no idea why he never gets involved in the offense. Every time he does, he looks amazing. But I, either between route chemistry or you know some other kind of thing with Tim Kelly, just it never seems to mesh. And so. Um, you don't seem real high on this offense here talking to you and, and that's okay. <laughs> it, uh, I, I have one last question here before I pass you over uh, to Greg here. How would you, knowing the, the team that you have and what you've seen from this team, how would you plan on attacking the Buffalo Bills here this weekend and, and trying to move the ball and generate some points and, and keep this a close game, keep it with arm's length? I really like the Buffalo secondary. So I would be trying to get, I would be in the big boy sets as much as I could in this one. I would try to play two or three tight ends more often, try to use the play action, because I think Davis Mills has done pretty well on that. And that's probably the only area I could say that about uh, him. And, and then I would, you know, kind of hope that you get a turnover here or there and you turn it into a close game. Yep. So flipping it over, I, I do think if you're going to take the, you know, for lack of a better term, the mercenary route of a free agency, it, it's probably more doable on defense. And there are a lot of names here that I, I did plenty of work on. I was a big fan of Malik Collins. I was a big fan. Uh, the Bills had Christian Kirksey in for a workout. I really wanted Desmond King. There's a lot of guys that I think. You still want Desmond King. I, I can't. You're not <laughs> right. hey, hey, um, hey, If you can leave him here this weekend. Folks. I was just going to say, if, if if there's, you know, some movement going on, you want to leave him here, go home with a fifth round pick. We could, we could work something out. Um, oh, the, let's start at the back end. Come on, come on. Well, yeah, I, 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 I start low. I start low. I start low. Um, I, I do like, we'll start at the front, and I like the rotation. There's a lot of guys who talk about the guys that we did draft work on. We love Charles Amenahu, just mm. a, a great person. You could tell, really had it put together well. I love seeing that come together. The same with Ross Blacklock. You're seeing a, a a similar rotation level that you see with the Bills where, you know, the Bills the last couple of games I've been ecstatic. Everybody plays more than 35% of snaps. Nobody plays more than like 55, 59, and everybody's in there just in waves. Um, the flashes have been really encouraging. It looks like Malik Collins is starting to carve out a little bit more. Is, is that coming together the way that they planned? It seems like there's at least some relative building block pieces there, especially in Blacklock and Amenahu that are people that you could see sticking with the franchise longer term. I mean, it's probably the best thing the defense has going for them right at this moment, just because the cornerback room has been kind of slaughtered via the Bradley Ruby trade and then some injuries as well. Uh, yes, Malik Collins has played really well. Um, Ross Blacklock and Charles Amenahu have played pretty well. And I don't understand quite why a man who got so much fewer snaps last game. It was a yeah. very weird sort of thing that kind of happened. And actually when I tweeted about that, he liked the tweet. <laughs> uh, basically I was like, who did he piss off? And he just liked the tweet. So yeah. what does that tell you? <laughs> um, yeah. John Grenard finally got on the field last week after kind of an illness thing. And then there's a lot of depth there. So he had trouble getting on in the first place, but I think he played really well. I was encouraged by his first start. I'd like to see more of him. 
Um, and yeah, as you said, it's kind of a deep group. It doesn't have, there's no like number one guy here. There might not be a number two guy here, but there's, there's a lot of combo pressures. They do a lot of games and they'll, yeah. they'll, they can generate some pressure on Josh Allen. Now, when you move into the next layer, obviously two, you know, legit professional linebackers with Kirksey and Cunningham, uh, maybe some flashes from Joe Thomas as the third guy, okay, maybe, you know, some interesting play there. It's you know, moving then into the secondary, there's a lot of, <laughs> hey, cats are always welcome on the yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. I love cats. Um, <laughs> you know, I saw your post about, you know, our fans wanting to keep Cunningham or what would it take to move on from him? Um, I know obviously the contract that was given out, we were very, you know, aware of that as Matt Milano was coming up on his deal that we signed this year and got a fantastic deal there and now dealing with Tremaine Edmonds coming up on his. So how has that worked out, bringing in someone like Kirksey? And then um, I was surprised to see how many snaps Thomas got in this last game against Carolina. Yeah, they really, as I said, they're they're very culture-focused right now. And uh, Kirksey is definitely one of the guys that they kind of have made a hallmark of that. He's yeah. very defensive of the culture. Uh, you know, he's he's always kind of the guy who's not going to give up. And he's played all right so far, I would say. I mean, like, I'm not, like, madly in love with his play. I think, you know, the rating sites kind of like him a lot. And I kind of think Trevor Lawrence just threw him a pick because Trevor Lawrence didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, he's, I, I he's wanted him player. instead of AJ Klein. I didn't want him playing <laughs> as much as Milano and, and Edmonds, but I wanted him as our third linebacker, like Joe Thomas is. I wanted him in that role. Yeah, yeah. Cunningham is a mess right now, guys. Um, Cunningham got suspended, uh, team suspended from the first quarter of the Browns game. Uh, nobody really can say why that is. David Cully would not answer questions about it at all. Uh, there's a lot of talk behind the scenes that he's kind of like not not the hardest worker, uh, not kind of a guy who maybe be a culture fit here. So that's kind of why I ran that poll. I was okay. curious what fans were thinking about that. And last year for him was a disaster. He was kind of the big problem in a lot of Derrick Henry's greatest hits. <laughs> that's the way I like to put it. Uh, and him and Josh Norman. <laughs> Josh Norman got in there, yeah. Yeah. Well, whenever whenever they whenever they uh, you know whenever the Texans had gigantic run gap problems. It was usually Zach Cunningham trying to jump early. And, yeah, that was a big problem. Joe Thomas, you said, played pretty well in a sparing role. I actually would not be stunned at all to move up Cunningham sometime soon. And they brought Joe Thomas in for more work and see what happens. Now, moving into the secondary, obviously we, we touched on, you know, some people know Vernon Hargraves. I'm a big fan of Lonnie Johnson. Um, I you like know, Lonnie and, a lot, yeah. You know, and, and that's a, a name that's there. I, I, I'm not sure uh, where Justin Reed is and in, in his potential to come back, but obviously big fan of Desmond King. I know, obviously, the trade, you know, right before the season, losing somebody like Roby, um, you know, kind of writing on the wall of where things are looking future-wise. How has that meshed together, having people in and out like that and there's talent there i mean i don't think it's bereft of talent but how has that been kind of with the bills talk all the time leslie frazier about how valuable it is that micah hyde jordan poyer trey white taron johnson levi wallace you know four full seasons together all the time together all the communication how they can do things with simple hand signals and just a nod or just a wink to each other knowing where those things are coming how it's it's you know this is a perfect example where just talent can't necessarily bridge those gaps for it is it are there signs that that's coming together or or how is that working as they're trying to figure it out it's 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 really weird to say um the talent kind of i feel like is mostly focused up the middle as you said desmond king perfectly good slot cornerback mm-hmm. maybe more uh i would like that signing a lot he's played fairly well so far just reads the best player in the secondary um leg injury looks like he's on track to play okay. so that's good news for the texans um set, set, outside of Reed safety though they haven't been playing lottie johnson very much they've been playing eric murray who was kind of one of bill o'brien's last uh, free agency busts and the secondary moving him from cornerback to safety uh last uh this year after having a cornerback last year it's, it seems like he's still not that good. <laughs> like, I, like I, I, I don't want to bag on the guy, uh, obviously rooting for him, but doesn't seem like it's worked out very well. And then the outside corners, man, I, I don't know what they see in Vernon Hargraves. I, I don't get it. I've watched him get elevated over and over again over guys who I think are better than him. And <laughs> just it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, Terrence Mitchell 
good player, you know, coming on concussion. Still, we don't know if he's going to play or not. And then you got Jamon Smith that back up outside corner, who I know absolutely nothing about. But hey, at least he's not from the Hawks. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's no big deal. It's not like they have to figure out Stephon Diggs and Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley. It's, it's not not going to be a problem at all. Listen, you 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 assume a lot by saying that you think they're going to try to figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> I am giving him credit for the attempt. I, the I, nice I thing is, is it's that. a lot of cover two, right? So you're not these guys won't be lot, on an island with those a lot, guys. lot yeah. of cover two, a lot of cover three. Very simple stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. enormous gaps. Uh, you know, as long as Josh Allen can throw in his own, seems like the Bills should have a good day. <laughs> Well, and it, it's going to be really similar. We talked about it last week, and obviously different a different defense with Washington, um, but very similar where it was going to take discipline. And after the first two games, which were not ideal for, from Josh Allen, there was question of, okay, can he, be, can he not press and not want to force the seam shots, not want to force those honey hole shots that you got to take the tougher ones? Can you just continue to take a profit? take the the short shots and then when they press up then go ahead and, and take the deeper shots when they're there and obviously he he did that in in spades you know against Washington um it's going to take something similar it's going to take hey this you can't you can't blow a team out in one drive you can't intimidate them into not trying you're going to need to just be disciplined take the open shots you have guys who can clearly get open and find open spots in the zone find them and work your way down the field and if you're able to do that hopefully you know from a bill standpoint hopefully that they can take control of the game and and, and make it sure might be a wet day there it, right now a it's chance for a some weather. chance for some weather here in orchard park uh this weekend which might keep the the bills passing game down a little bit yeah but what what do you expect to see this weekend? Obviously, some pleasant surprises and some of the games being competitive uh, early on with, with uh, the first six quarters, anyways of of the season. What are you expecting to see this weekend? And, and give us a score prediction. I will be happy if they don't lose by thirty. Um, I think where I'm headed for with this is probably something closer to like seventeen thirty uh, with Bills winning. I, I think that the Texans will try to kind of play keep away uh not successfully and unless unless the bills have a turnover rash which is kind of the only reason so far that uh lovey smith has gotten the praise and kind of his if i'm being honest his sole focus as a coordinator at this point every time he leads out a, a press conference it's just like takeaways 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 let's talk about takeaways yeah we didn't get any last game well was, i like to talk about the things i do well too that, that's unfortunate <laughs> and that's we'll, we'll just keep trying and that's kind of that's kind of who he is right now so yeah as long as the bills don't have like a massive turnover rash don't lose the turnover battle by three or four or whatever i, I don't think this is a huge threat to them <laughs> Uh, real quick before we let you go, we got a lot of people in the chat asking about our our guy Andre Roberts. Uh, off to a rough start here this year after leaving. People are asking what's going on with Andre Roberts because the Andre Roberts we saw there was a lot of talk internally on Twitter and stuff like that of uh, letting him go. He was playing at an All Pro level uh, here in Buffalo and uh, saw him here last week, not having a great time so far in Houston. What's going on with him? Yeah, he had his knee drained uh, a couple of times in the preseason, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. He didn't play at all in the preseason. Right. And I think he's just still trying to kind of find his playing shape again. Yeah. Uh, I don't really think that he's as bad as he's shown so far. But, yes, it's been ugly, and I, I do wonder if they're going to try Desmond King back there at some point. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool, man. So I'll let the folks know. Obviously, we, we talk all the time about DVOA and, and huge fans of Football Outsiders. I know you do work with NBC Sports Edge as well. Let the folks know where they can find your work. Well, I pretty much post everything I write on Twitter uh, at Rivers McCowan, MCCOWN, if you're, just only, if you're only audio. And other than that, I mean, NBC Sports Edge, Football Outsiders, two great websites, full chock full of good content. Uh, I'm, I'm working for both of them. And it's the season grind. So just got to keep going. And post my personal text and stuff on riversmccown.com where nobody will read it because nobody <laughs> cares about this thing anymore. <laughs> it'll, it'll come back around. Email, man. <laughs> it'll come back around. We, That's we, right. we appreciate your time tonight. You, you, were, you were great. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll at least hope for an entertaining competitive game this weekend. At least game. Uh, yeah, get, walking out healthy, no more injuries. Uh, hopefully get ourselves through it here, but that, we appreciate that, it. That, you were great tonight. That, that, that feels terrible, by the way, when you say that. When you say, just let, let's just have a healthy game. <laughs> that, there's like that assumed, like, oh, yeah, well, this is, 
I just hope everybody stays healthy. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I just hope both teams have fun. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, thanks, man. Right, we thanks, appreciate man. your Good time. <laughs> Oh, all right. I, it's obviously great to have somebody like Rivers on. Very, very, you know, informed on the league it's overall. Spot. It's a tough um, spot to be. You could tell. You could tell. And and, yeah. and you guys should have seen the DMs back and forth preparing for the show. Uh, it's I, I he's I'd probably he's, quit the show again oh, if we if the Bills he's not a pretend fan. He cares yeah. about the Texans. He's a yeah. genuine fan of the Texans. And this it sucks, man. It, like it sucks not to have any confidence or faith in the decision makers in the franchise you have a genuine superstar and we're not going to touch on the stuff off the field with deshaun watson he'll he'll face the whatever the appropriate repercussions are for for what's going on there when on the field he is a superstar he is a superstar i don't player. want him to go in our division yeah i don't want him at anywhere all near i don't want him anywhere near us. at all i don't yeah. want him to i don't play for houston either go trade him to philly that would yeah. be work out just fine um but to have that in hand and to know this is a guy you can root for and, and build around for 10 more years and then all of a sudden to just have everything unravel and that you're going to start over again and just like we're seeing with the Jets, like just like we're seeing with these other moribund franchises, if you can't figure out that quarterback spot, you just have no genuine hope for the future mm -hmm. and now for them to be in that spot, I feel for someone like him that you can see it and you could hear it in his voice. Well, how much he cares about this team. And especially those teams I was talking about that I thought were going to be competing with the Patriots. Those were led by Matt Schwab. Like these were teams that still like they were the quarterback away. Yes. From taking that next yes. step. And you finally get that guy. And he's the guy that can put okay. your team on the back, win games by himself. And it just all sort of crumbled around him and started with O'Brien and getting rid of Hopkins and, and moving away from pieces that were p good fits for this team uh, and just destroying the future. JJ Watt, DeAndre Hopkins, yeah. Will Fuller, superstar. Th those are not like nice, but those are superstar players. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Crazy. I, I feel for, I really do feel mm. for Texans fans. I've never met one in real life. <laughs> um, River's the first one I've actually River's the first across. one I've ever met. And, uh, but I, the ones that are supposedly out there, I do feel bad for them. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think as we get ourselves ready here uh, for our, our Uncle Jumbo's player spotlight, one of the things that we wanted to touch on was there, there are a couple things from an injury standpoint and in that I think it's worth being able to kind of poke around and see where we think that's going to put us from a, a, a preparedness for this game because – it was nice to see Stars not on there, Harrison's not on there, FAO Bot right. is cleared, all that's pretty good. Levi, Gabe, you can Gabe Davis. Levi. So Levi, like, both Levi and Dane Jackson <laughs> are off the report. Um, but now we saw Micah Hyde didn't practice right. uh, and was on there from the ankle that we saw during the game and uh, a five for, or, no, wait, for Micah Porter. Hyde as well. Jordan Poirier was a not practice. Sorry, yeah, but Micah yeah. Hyde was the five. Uh, Jordan Poirier did not was practice. Limited. Uh, Micah was limited. Right. And it brought up a question that... You know, how do you walk the line mm -hmm. of Sean McDermott saying all the right things? That if you don't take every single game seriously, that's how you get embarrassed in this league. Um, and that, you know, Josh, obviously tongue in cheek, but said he didn't even know that they were playing the Chiefs next week. That he, he, they're only focused mm -hmm. on the game at hand. And that's absolutely the right thing to say. He's lying. Boyko He's has, the, yeah. has little quote boxes cue cards that he yeah, showed cue cards. of things to, to show that he's <laughs> absolutely lying um but i respect it that's the right thing yeah, to say totally i lie all the time I, yeah, however if i'm leslie frazier if i'm sean mcdermott if i'm brandon bean and you're asking me can we win this game with demar hamlin or and or jaquan johnson yeah probably we probably can and mm -hmm. if there's if <laughs> I'm going to assume Micah Hyde's okay. He's limited and ready. If he Jordan... talked about last week, too. Uh, he was limited for a practice last week and had the red jersey on, and he sort of alluded to that he made that decision. Yeah. Like he was just going to, he's been in the league so long that he has these aches and pains and that it, everything was fine and he was going to get through. So I'm assuming it's, it's the case, like he had mentioned last week, and that he's just taken early in the week to. Not get an official yeah. rest day, but a limited day. Uh, correct, correct. And they trust him. Yeah, he's the kind of guy who can go to them and say, "Hey, I'm going to do my quads all the time. Yeah, I'm going to do walk through today. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit different." And they're going to say, "Okay," like they're, they're absolutely going to trust that. Yeah. If Jordan Poyer is anywhere short of 
whatever in season 100 percent is because no nfl player is 100 percent after the first game if he's anywhere short of regular in season version of 100 percent, i'm awful tempted to see what we have in jaquan johnson and demar hamlin i just there's no i don't see any value rolling the dice and i'm not one like that i i very much believe in you play full go every game to win it um this is one of the rare games where I don't know that the Bills have to be 100% to win this game. Uh, well, I mean, I've even said it um, with Starr having his injury er- earlier in the year here in week one. I was like, you know, I think you can get through that game. This is a little different because of the drop-off uh, in talent from J- Jordan Porter to whoever it is. Jaquan Johnson is yeah. probably going to be the guy that gets that look. Um, I don't know that we need to see DeMar Hamlin yet. I, I-, I think yeah. we- I want to see Jaquan Johnson. I- when he came out, Jaquan Johnson was the one that he came in the good. game. They were both available, and he yeah. looked fine. He had that one great stick on, yeah. on tra- tra- Taylor Haneke. Yeah, and I want to see what he's got because he's been here long enough, and I don't know the player that he is. So I, I, if I'm a coach, I'm interested in the opportunity here. We know Sean McDermott likes to ha- be presented with types of opportunities sure. that come up along the way. This might be a good l- opportunity for to get a look at this guy because – anything can happen to either one of these safeties at any point throughout the season. You want to be able to get a look if can we trust Jaquan, Jaquan Johnson in that role uh, to get you through a game, or is it going to have to be something, Hey, we got to really speed up the development of Tamar Hamlin here. If something was to happen. So I do think this is a game. I think they're saying all the right things. Then yep. uh, that is yep. the, been the bill's way from, from the jump. Mm-hmm. They're going to say all the right things, but I think you also see Sean McDermott handle injuries with a conservative approach. Yep injuries so if, if jordan porter isn't 100 percent tomorrow if he's a do not practice tomorrow i'm just gonna assume yeah they're they're taking that chance and saying hey because it, it's sort of a win-win i don't think starting Jam- jaquan johnson in a game like this is going to be the reason that you fall a trap game to the texans like he, he could even give up a big play I, I don't think one big play two big plays is going to allow the texans to walk just like the game. washington game exactly we, we gave up two a couple big, big plays, plays and it- sure and was it was not still, the difference. Yes. And so I think this is a really um, assuming and hoping that Jordan Porter's injury is not past this and that he's able to go for KC and it's nothing more than missing a week. I think there's a little bit of silver lining in this to be able to get a look at a developing player they haven't been able to see. I don't think anyone in the Bills knows who Jaquan Johnson is uh, as a player. So I, I think there's an opportunity here and I kind of want to see it. Rest, rest Poyer up. Make sure he's good to go for KC because I'm looking forward to that game. Yes. Uh, I, and I'm the guy that's always saying it's a week-to-week league. You can't look forward. I, I, I'm i not disrespecting the Texans. I just have that much confidence that the Bills should handle business, really no matter who they put out there and with the depth that they have on this team. Yeah. And, you know, so, again, our, our Uncle Jumbo's player spotlight. Check out our friends over at Uncle Jumbo's. They're American vodka, country, lemon, very good, all kinds of great flavors, and soon to be their Niagara Frontier whiskey bourbon. I can't wait to give that a taste myself. Um, but uh, make sure you check out our friends over there at Uncle Jumbo's Distillery.com. Um, and, Aaron's and- on the injury report, too. If he needs a uh, groin <laughs> and mine's not even getting used at all, there you go. You're welcome to it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see where things go from. The progression as the week goes. Star was a great example last week. Did not play on, did not participate on Wednesday. Limited uh, Thursday, full go Friday. Played and played really well. Yes. Um. So I, I think there's certainly opportunity for that to happen here again. Um. But you know, I said it at the end of the the segment with uh, Rivers that I think this is going to be a really similar game to Washington. Um. You know, Houston plays a ton of too high shell. They sit there, they don't blitz a ton, they bring the front four, and they sit back there in zone, and they try to rally and tackle. We have some of the best zone beaters in the league. We have guys who can find the soft spots in zone. We have guys that are really tough to just continue to man up with, and I think this is another game where you could see 10, 11, 12 catches for Cole Beasley. I think you're going to see another nice game from both Diggs and Sanders, and that maybe this is the big game for Diggs this week. It all depends on what they try to do. They don't have a William Jackson the third in this secondary who can run with Stephon Diggs down the field. He's not going to lock him up, but he can you know, at least point Josh over to Sanders and, and make it easier to choose the other direction. In this one, if... Diggs gets loose, he's going to be able to uncork it to him a couple times. So um, 
I, I expect another big game from Josh Allen. I think this defensive line is decent. I think they have good linebackers. Um, so I don't think we're going to see a ton of run game. I think we, you know, maybe it ends up balanced like the Washington game was that as it went, we get our normal 38, 39% we have every single week. Um, I think it's something similar because we will have some four minute drill opportunities there, but I expect another really good Josh Allen game. I expect another disciplined short passing attack and eventually they're going to get tempted and they're going to press up and they're going to hit the deep seam shots and they're going to hit those deeper shots. Um, and, and I expect it to go that way. And and I think it's going to be even a little bit further than Rivers predicted. I have it 38-13. I, I think right. that it's going to be um, a pretty commanding game. I don't expect it to be jump out and ride it. I don't expect it to be a ton of points at the end. I think the Bills are going to score every other time they have the ball. And that I think that the Texans will put up a little bit. Brandon Cooks is a legit NFL player. If you let Brandon Cooks get loose, he can get yards. You saw it against the Panthers. Panthers have a good defense. Um, but I, I'm picking 38-13. I think it's going to get ugly. Well, and before I get into my prediction, I do want to talk about a little bit of the numbers here because yeah. I love DVOA and these things. I tweeted out earlier, and you can go check that out. But uh, this just looks like a super unbalanced um uh, game here for the Texans. So overall right now, uh, DVOA bills are sixth Houston's 19th in Dave, which is their DVOA adjusted for early variance. Uh, so last seasons, uh, and preseasons sort of what the thoughts of that team would be versus what's happened already early in the season. So DVOA for those that don't know, it adjusts for opponent quality. So you can be third or whatever, uh, in DVOA, but actually be rated first in weighted DVOA because it weights your opponent. So there's a little bit more context to DVOA than just a basic NFL ranking of it. They are the first rated offense and just goes by yards. This goes a little bit deeper context level. So yeah, you can see up here on the screen. Uh, so bills are third in DVO and Dave, uh, Houston's 29th in overall DVO. And I think that's true. I think they're right there with down there with the jets, um, offense bills are 16th. Houston's 21st and Dave bills are actually the 12th best offense and Houston's 31st. Again, I think that's accurate. Uh, passing 18th for the bills, 15th for Houston. I think some of that's inflated right now from the tie rod performances early yes. in the year and some of the big plays that he was able to get. Yeah, Davis Mills is not 13th. No, no, <laughs> not yet. Um, rush bills are sixth actually. So we pounded the table about how this bills team needs to be more efficient. We aren't seeing more running. We're seeing much more efficient running yes. out of this yes. bills team. It was exactly what every content creator and the Buffalo Twitter first has been asking for. So that's showing up in DVOA uh, Houston's 31st, which rivers talked about the running game is just non-existent um which if it's a weather game not good for the texans uh defense bill second overall uh in defense here so far to start the year houston's 12th not bad uh and dave bills are first houston's 23rd that's probably accurate too that what we're seeing early in the year um it's not great opponents all around either there, there's some of that built into why they're ranked 12th overall uh past defense bills are second houston's seventh that's not nothing and uh, Buffalo's fifth in rush, Houston's 30th in uh, rush DVOA. Special teams, Bills are 19th, Houston's 28th. Uh, and then Dave on special teams, Bills are 17th. So they've jumped up a few spots there. And Houston's 20th. Explosive plays. We talk about toxic differential all the time. Houston actually leads the Bills again, I think, because of the tie rod games in some of the explosive plays. Uh, so they have, they're have they right now on offense. They're 13th in explosive pass plays with 10. They're 30th uh, with only three rushes. Bills are 22nd in explosive pass plays with eight. Uh, 18th in runs with seven. Uh, but they give up so many more explosive plays. Yeah, so you can see this graph here. And the difference is, you look, Bills right now for the year are plus four. And just explosive plays. This isn't talking about all the other things that go into toxic differential, like turnovers. Bills are plus much more when you add in the turnovers that they've been able to generate. Uh, but Texans are minus 10. That's not when you're a bad team and don't match up man for man with the team. You can't also be minus 10 in explosive plays to the team you're playing. That's just not a rest. You need to generate explosive plays to stay in a game and their lack of ability to do that. Um, when the spread first came out, so I'll get into my what I was thinking here for this game. When the spread first came out, what was it, 17-something for this the spread for this game? 17 and a half. Yeah. 17 and a half. 
I, I was like shook. Like one of those memes was like, whoa, I've yeah. never seen a Bills 17 point spread uh, that I can think of. And I was like, there's no way they can cover. And the more I've gotten into these numbers, the more I've broken down this game. I think there's very much a way. There's uh, a reason it, it's 17 and a half. Yeah. And if I'm a betting man, I think that it's very much to take that spread. I don't, th- I don't see a way unless weather's really out of control. And this is just a wonky game. Uh, like river said, the bills are just, you know, playing real messy and sloppy. I guess the one thing that scares me about this game is I think the bills have the right mental makeup. The The process is real. The culture is real. I think the stuff Stefan Diggs talks about not caring about his stats and Emmanuel Sanders not caring about their stats. I think all that's real, but it is a little bit hard when you are probably watching this defense and thinking that you can feast. And we know Josh likes to, press a little bit and to make those big plays and that is where this game could allow them to stay at an arm's length is if josh is pushing the ball a little bit too much to get digs going and get him that big game or to you know make some of these big splash plays instead of like you said i think the path to victory is surgically just beating this team and taking the wind out of them one play at a time with for these beautiful long drives that we saw last week if they can stick to and stay, you know, strict to, hey, we we got to stay focused and surgically beat this team. I don't think there's a chance for the Texans. But if they get into, hey, we want to make some big splash plays and get digs on the board, that's where you could get in trouble. I think it's a big game. One guy that you didn't mention that I think can also help out in this. We we talk about Sanders and Beasley a lot when breaking down zones. Dawson Knox has gotten a lot better at finding these holes in zones. I think this could be, you know, he's had a nice start to this campaign for himself. And uh, I think he's eased a lot of the concerns that the Dawson Knox haters had. I think this might be an opportunity for him to have a little bit of a breakout game uh, here in that cover too. I think he's done a really good job at finding zones. Josh is building confidence in him as the season goes on. So I could see him having maybe one of his better games as a bill. We're seeing more snaps from Knox and him involved in the offense a little bit more. So I'm looking at him to have a big game, but yeah, any one of these receivers, I totally agree with you. It could be a 11 reception day from Colby Z easily. I think Sanders is going to be another nice, don't keep him on your bench this week. I know a bunch of people right. had him on their bench in fantasy. I think that connection is, is real and in a zone heavy scheme. I, I think they're going to try to do some bracket stuff to slow down digs. I think everybody's first option is to take sure. digs away, uh, but they, they, there's not enough talent on the field on the other side to, to take all these guys away. So I, I didn't go as aggressive as you. You had one more score than me. I went 31-13, just edging over uh, the spread on this. I, I think Vegas is right, and yep. that I, I'm totally with it. I might even – I'd never even place bets on things. I might go place a bet on this spread. I don't know. It, it just – it feels like Vegas is totally right about this matchup. Yeah, and I so I am a believer – I never take teams getting double digit points in the NFL. Yeah. I never bet against that. That hey, it's just too hard with professional teams. I will probably stay off this game. I will be picking the Bills to cover. Mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to bet on the Bills to cover. Seventeen, yeah, but I don't. Sixteen bet. and a half, seventeen, seventeen and a half is a lot. It's a lot of points, but the Bills are that much better. And the you want to what the Washington football team is better than the Texans and By the Bills good showed By decent last man. week if they're disciplined and stick to their plan they can tear these kind of teams apart that just are not in a position to be able to come at them I think they stick in eleven personnel they're going to keep Knox and a running back on the field they're going to continue to chip Josh is going to continue to be able to maneuver in the pocket and move his way around. And they're going to find the open man, and they're going to keep working their way down the field over and over and over again. I think we see another game where it's one or two punts for Matt Hawk. I just don't mm-hmm. see that many three and again, just short of a crazy weather event. Um, I don't think we see a lot of easy three and out drives. I think it's going to be points repeatedly throughout this game, and we'll see where it adds up and where it comes. But Bills fans should be prepared to have a good time and enjoy this game. I don't think we're overlooking them. I don't think that we're taking it lightly. The team said all the right things. Sean McDermott said yeah. the right things. Josh Allen said the right things. Anything can focused. happen. It, I've seen crazier yeah. things in the NFL happen. The Bills, but- as a 16 and a half point underdog, beat the Minnesota Vikings, and that was the Josh Allen hurdle game over yes. Anthony Barr. These things happen in the NFL. They do. They do. And I just don't think the chances are good. And the thing that I need to see is I'm always going to be team. A win is a win, right? Like no matter what the final score is, I'm happy with a win and move on to the next week. I really want to see it. We've seen it kind of pop up here more recently this year, but the ability to put your foot 
on the throat yeah. of an, a weaker opponent and just dominate them and put them out. That is what the, the best teams in the league do. And I want to see this team establish themselves as we're not messing around with these teams. We're not going to allow them to hang out in games and allow some of that wonky stuff to happen. We're going to come out early, get them at a fairly arm's length. Even Washington with some of those fluky plays got back into that game. They yep. were able to get momentum back. They uh, had the ball within seven. Yes, and so I, I don't even want to see that. I want to see at least yeah, you know a two possession buffer for the entire game at minimum, and just you're way better than this team on paper and on tape so far this year. Go out and, and play like that and establish yeah. it and and have that killer instinct to just put them away and don't ever let them back in. And, and I will say for anyone you know sean mcdermott's not perfect sean mcdermott has his flaws things that he's still working on things he needs to get better at and you want to nitpick about the decision making in critical big time games things like that is he aggressive enough in in some of those one thing he is consistent with is the bills do not stub their toe against bad teams Mm -hmm. the teams the bills are supposed to beat they beat yeah and that it's just they are very and – and it comes down to exactly what you hear. It, I know it's cliches. I know it's, you know, recycled sound bites. It's just saying the right thing. He keeps them focused on the moment, on the task at hand. Except for that fluky Arizona time. game. They should have beat. Yeah, but even that, that yeah. was not that was still not them overlooking it. That was just a ridiculous play at the end. Yeah. Um, and even then, I, I don't – know that they were favored out in arizona it was a very close one um but either way that kind of game that that these where they're a a huge favorite he keeps them focused on it so obviously we hope all of that comes through we hope that that's the kind of game that we enjoy here but there's uh, a lot of snack chat real quick here in uh uh and so somebody's asking you am i cool with I don't care about sack total. You'll never get me caring about, I I would love a six sack game. Sure. Um, and that's more fun to watch, but I, I care about pressures and the bills defensive lines done a good enough job for me in terms of pressures. I, I'm really happy. Some of the pressures that they generated led to some of the turnovers that we saw in that game. It, it wasn't super sexy, but I, I'm happy with the, the way this defensive line is developing and not all game plans are the same. So I think people that were frustrated with the lack of, of pressures in the last game have to go maybe look at some of what the game plan, what they were trying to do and keeping Heineke in the pocket and not allowing to run out and keeping contained. So it's not going to be every single week. You're going to see it, but I'm not going to associate the amount of assets that they've put into the defensive line with just sack total in general. The defense plays as a whole, it's one of 11 every time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not, not terribly concerned with that. And right now they have 10 sacks through three or they uh, eight sacks through, through three games. So it's, uh, I take back nine sacks now. So nine sacks in three games. They're on pace for 51 sacks for the year. So if anyone said that 51 sacks was not enough for them, I don't believe you. So right. they're, they're on pace for 51 sacks. And, and we haven't even played the Jets yet. Fantastic pressures. Well, and <laughs> believe me, Davis Mills is He's not, gonna get, yeah, is he'll not get. Taylor Heineke. Like no. it, that there's going to be opportunities here this game. For if sure. anybody watched the Panthers game on uh, last Thursday night. He will get hit. There's going to be opportunities here. So and Jerry um, Hughes' own Laramie Tunzel. Yes. Uh yeah. so far. And I expect Greg Rousseau to also. Yeah. This would be a great game to see that. So, Aaron, uh, any final thoughts for the fans as they get ready for this weekend? Da, enjoy this weekend. Uh, we got a little things get a little rough here for the next couple of weeks after this. Um, yeah, again, and we lose our Sunday one p.m. stretch here. For, yeah, we uh, lose the Sunday one p.m. stretch and a little bit more difficult competition here coming up. But I'll tell you what, I feel a lot better about this next couple of weeks stretch than I did a month ago. Uh, so I'm really excited. But yeah, sit back, enjoy this, make some really good food this week. I haven't decided what I'm doing. I'm I know you're going to have your... I'm excited. We're gonna, chili, I'm gonna... dude. That's a rough weekend going steak, chili, back to yeah. back. That's a lot yeah. of beef. We're going to do... Oh, no, no, no. The, my, my Saturday meal is going to be chili. I'm going to do a chili uh, game for Whoa. this weekend. Wait, so you're not having a... I'm not. I'm not. It's going to be chili instead. <sighs> It's like, George, it's like Jordan. It's like Jordan Poyer. If they, it, if the Bills lose this game, you're, I'm you're never going to hear the end of it. You're screwed. I'm never going to hear the end of it if, should, if the Bills yeah. lose the game. You should do both. You should have a steak <laughs> I, top and chili. I should grill a steak along just with pop my it chili, in chili and, and just yeah. cover it in chili. Yeah, I, if we, we, I'll look at. I mean, it's not hard to talk me into having a steak. So yeah. we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. You're committed at this point, man. <laughs> um, we, we appreciate you guys very much. The chat was awesome tonight. Um, uh, make sure you check out our, our friends over uh, at Uncle Jumbo's uh, under fantasy app everybody that we have uh, supporting us make sure you're checking out all the shows across 
the the Cover One uh, network. We had disguised coverage earlier tonight with Anthony Prayaska. Tomorrow we'll get your fantasy questions going uh, with the Cover One Fantasy Show. And the great we'll film room this you. weekend. Awesome this film weekend. room. Make yeah. sure you're checking out. Uh, Anthony and Eric did a fantastic job with this week's show. Great show last night from the guys at the Hoof. We're here for you all week long, uh, and we'll be back for you immediately following the game on Sunday to enjoy uh, another hopefully uh, dominant Bills victory. So um, on behalf of Aaron Quinn, I am Greg Thompson. You've been listening to Cover One Buffalo, and we are 